by Bobcats. In this video, we are going to look at the concept of isotopes. The existence of isotopes um, are one of the things that uh, makes Dalton's atomic theory not quite exact. Um, in Dalton's atomic theory, he said that all of the atoms of a particular element are identical. But we know now that um, certain versions of the atoms of an element will have different numbers of neutrons present. That means they're going to have different masses. They're going to have some very, very slightly different physical properties. Um, and we're going to call those different versions isotopes. Our objectives are to define what isotopes are to figure out how many protons, neutrons, and electrons are present in a particular isotope, and then to make sure we can use all three standard forms of the isotope notation, uh, the one that has the two numbers stacked, the one that has just a single number and the element symbol, and then the one where we use the element name and a single number. This drawing is illustrating the particles that are present in the three different naturally occurring isotopes of hydrogen. We have what's called protium, deuterium, and tritium. As far as I know, hydrogen is the only element that has special names for its three isotopes. It's possible that other elements do too as well. Um, I just don't know about them. Nuclear chemistry isn't my specialty. Um, but uh, you do hear about deuterium and tritium quite a bit. Um, okay, so when we're looking at these three isotopes, notice that in the first one, the one on the far left, there's only a single proton in the nucleus. But in the second isotope, there's both a proton and a neutron. And then in the last isotope, the third one, there are two neutrons and a proton. All three isotopes have just a single electron. So down below each isotope, I've shown two versions of the isotope notation. Um, the, the first one has the symbol 11H, um, and then the name hydrogen-1, which is just read hydrogen-1. The second symbol, or the second isotope, has the symbol 21H, or hydrogen-2. And the third one has the symbol 31H, or hydrogen-3. What I want to do is connect these numbers that appear in these symbols with the particles that are present in the nucleus. Right? These isotope symbols refer to the nucleus. Um, if we look at all three nuclei and then all three symbols, all three of the stacked symbols, where we have the two numbers stacked and the element symbol, they all have the number one down at the bottom. And so if we look at the symbols or the, uh, the drawings of the nuclei, um, my question is, what do we have one of in all three of these drawings? Well, if you look closely, hopefully you'll see that there is one proton. In this drawing, those are the red circles. So there is one red circle in all of these, one proton. So that bottom number is going to tell us the number of protons. So let's look now at the drawings and at the symbols. Um, the symbol on the left has a one for the top number. The middle one has a two for the top number. And the right hand one has a three for the top number. So if we're looking at the nuclei, what do we have one, two, and three of, respectively? Well, it's the total number of particles in the nucleus. The, we have one, two, and three total particles in the nucleus. So that top number is telling us the total of the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Now we have some special names for these numbers, which I'm going to um, add in here. The top number is known as the mass number. Now it's not actually the mass, but if we were to round the mass to the nearest whole number, it will be equal to that. Um, what the mass number actually is telling us is that total number of particles, and each particle weighs about one. So if we have three particles, the mass of the, part of, of the isotope will be about three. 
the bottom number is known as the atomic number. And the atomic number is the same for every isotope of an element. So if we change the atomic number, we change what element we are talking about. There's one more uh, thing I wanted to point out about this form of the isotope notation. Sometimes this form of the isotope notation um, will be abbreviated a little bit. So for the first isotope, it'll be shown as 1H. For deuterium, it'll be shown as 2H. And for tritium, it'll be shown as 3H. The reason for that is that saying the number 1 and the symbol H is actually redundant. If the element is hydrogen, its atomic number is 1. If the atomic number is 1, the element is hydrogen. So we don't need to say both of those things. Oh, pardon me. Uh, then um, the last form of the isotope notation is down at the bottom where we have the word hydrogen 1, hydrogen 2, hydrogen 3. And once again, that number that's being shown in this form of the notation, the 1, the 2, or the 3, that number will be the mass number. The mass number is different for all the isotopes. The atomic number is the same for all the isotopes of an element. To expand a little bit on the atomic number, the atomic number is going to tell us the number of protons. For a neutral atom, that will also be the number of electrons. And this is what gives an element its identity in the periodic table. It will be the number in the periodic table that is a whole number. And uh, this is the, um, the property that is used to order the periodic table. The elements are arranged in order of increasing atomic number. The mass number tells us the total number of particles in the nucleus. Another way of saying that is it's the sum of the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Different isotopes will have different mass numbers. And so it'll be close to, but not exactly equal to, the mass of an atom in atomic mass units because each proton and each neutron is about one atomic mass unit. And it's really important to note that this number does not appear on the periodic table in most cases. There are some specialized periodic tables that will put the mass numbers of various isotopes, but then you'll have multiple mass numbers. Um, this, but our periodic table for this class will not include the mass number. The number that has the decimal places on it in the square for the element is something called the average atomic mass, and we'll look at that in a later section. If we're going to count the particles that are present in an isotope, the number of electrons will be equal to its atomic number. The number of protons is also equal to the atomic number. And the number of neutrons will be equal to the atomic number, I'm sorry, the mass number minus the atomic number. I also want to point out that the number of electrons being equal to the atomic number is true for neutral atoms only. In the next chapter, we're going to look at ions, and when um, we are talking about the number of electrons in an ion, it'll be different than the number of protons because ions are charged. And so there's an imbalance between electrons and protons. Let's look at a couple of examples of how these concepts would appear on a quiz or a test. If we're looking for how many protons are in carbon-14, well, let's see, that 14 is going to be the mass number which is going to be the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So that's not our answer. To get the number of protons, we need the atomic number. For that, we need to go to the periodic table. When you find carbon in the periodic table, you'll find that its atomic number is 6. And the atomic number is the number of protons, so 6 will be the number of protons in carbon. This question is very similar to the previous one. It's asking how many electrons are in carbon-14. The atomic number of carbon is 6. We had looked that up on the previous slide. And for a neutral atom, the number of protons equals the number of electrons. So this isotope will have 6 electrons. 
To calculate the number of neutrons, we're going to take the mass number, which is 14, and subtract the atomic number, which is 6, and that will give us 8 neutrons. To wrap up with our objectives, we wanted to define isotopes. Those are different versions of the atoms of an element that have different numbers of neutrons, so that means they'll also have different masses. We want to calculate the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons in an isotope, and then correctly interpret the three forms of isotope notation, and from that notation, go back to the middle objective, which is to calculate the protons, electrons, and neutrons.